Good day everybody, welcome back. Welcome to the stage two of this box. If you haven't seen the first one, I did this side already. Um, go back a step and, and watch that video. So this will be, this is the second video, part of a series of five, because I have four sides to do and the top. Okay, so here we go. What I've got here, same colors as the last time. Now, I've got these little spoons that you can purchase if you want to, but they're perfect for your powder. So I don't need a lot there. You can reuse the same one. I'll show you what I do. This is just a dry cloth. I just wipe it. Go again. Gonna need some of that, maybe a little bit more. They're just cute little ones. They're quite soft, so go easy on them. And I will use a little bit of ir iridescent lime. Actually, this is iridescent jade. So I'll be using a tiny little bit of this. I just want a, a little bit in, in the wave itself. So that's that one done. And wipe my little spoon and put it away for next time. Now, they are too soft to use with your pigment pastes, so I won't be using them. I'll just use my sticks for that. But anyway, I better go and mix up some, some resin. Okay, so I've got my EcoArt silicon cup here, and I absolutely love these because they're just so easy to use. Somebody had... Um, send me a question asking about how to clean them well I like to clean them right after they've been used so what I do is I usually tip it upside down when I'm when I'm done just to allow those last few drops to come out but then you get these tiny little little bubbles kind of stuck on the sides of the of the the silicon and because the silicon and resin they hate each other so it sort of splits them into these tiny little bubbles which stick on there and they they do come off easy but it's it's a job getting them off so i like to clean these straight up after i'm done i just use my alcohol wipes or just spray some alcohol in there and use a dry cloth and wipe it up and then just give it a a nice wash with with some soapy water and that is it clean and ready for next go and then you don't have to worry about the tiny little bubbles that are stuck on the side of the cup all right so that's ready and mixed now I'm just gonna mix my my colors this is the sky well it's not called the sky blue it's actually called ice blue or blue ice rather and uh, I'm just mixing a little bit of the pigment in there oh my neighbor's got a loud car it's it's morning time so everybody's kind of taking their kids to school and stuff so you just uh, mix the resin knife into a nice thick paste and then you add some more of the resin to it so I'll stir that in after and I'll do the same to all of them. The paste I don't usually mix in first. Actually, you should mix them in into the resin itself. So I need about that much. And grab some. I don't want it too thick. I want it fairly transparent because, you know, I've already got the colour down here. So this is the Appetite Blue. Alrighty, so we've got Appetite Blue, Angel White, we've got the White Sand, and we've got the Iridescent Jade, we've got the Peacock Green, and the Blue Ice. Okay, I'll mix all of them together, and I'll be back. Okay, we're ready to start. So I'm going to start down here in uh, the sand area. So you can see these lines here, that was just me mapping out to continue and connect with this line here so my rest my uh, sand would start over here and, and it might not work out exactly 
on the line but that's the idea anyways I'm trying to keep it kind of uniformed as much as possible around the edges there guaranteed my little grandson will notice that they're not meeting and there's something different so I'm just looking at how far I need to go up here so the edges are really important at this stage that I get them right so okay, that's done and I've got a tape around here which really helps and then I've got some just uh, clear tape around over the top of the masking tape just to give it that extra strength and then I went over that with a heat gun because it kind of shrinks the tape and uh, makes it pull in so hopefully it'll work I could probably mix some more of this sand color so don't think I have enough there so let's see how we go with the other colors I might not need to I might be okay with with it Okay, that's that one done. Now I'm going to go up here with the sky colour. Seems like I'm doing everything back to front. Or back to front. But these are the colours that are going to stay. So I am sure I won't have enough of this sky colour. definitely need to mix up a little bit more of that. I'd rather mix some more later than have too much of one colour and not enough of the other colour. So that's why I do it like that. And you can probably hear my fan running, which I will turn off now. I'll pop it back on a little bit after. Because if there's too much of that fan noise, I might have to do the the voiceover which is a bugger because it takes time and sometimes I miss things alrighty so that's that done I will use my finger I'll scrape up as much as I've got here I'm using my finger to spread that this is much better consistency than the last one I'm a bit you know, better organized with this one so my resin's nice and got a nice flow that's for sure I'm going to try and bring it as close as possible to this line and uh, okay. there we go Right, that is that. I'm going to go around with my blue. So I've got it mapped out here. These things that you can see, they were just indentations of the, the staple gun. So the staples are in there. I wanted to cover them up. That's another thing I didn't do with the with the last piece or the other side of it, rather. And I had a little bit of trouble with the air bubbles coming through it. That's meeting there nicely, which is okay. Don't mind that. This Appetite Blue is such a gorgeous colour. If you don't have it and you like ocean scenes and you like metallics, you need it. I'm telling you, it's beautiful. Probably can't see it up there, probably looks like a dark blob, but it's, it's really gorgeous. I 
I'm just going over the here. That's where my white is going to go to. And just want to bring this up. You can see that that uh, blue marker is bleeding through a little bit. Does not matter. I'm going to cover it. And push some of this up there a bit. Because I mixed it quite transparent. That's what you get, like a transparent kind of line. And I will pull that a little bit later, let it sit a little bit. Right, let's get my gorgeous peacock. It's going to go a little bit up here, and a lot of it down here, like that. Whoops. No, no, I'm good. I thought I went over my line. I did, but that's not important, that line. Made a mistake with that one before. Maybe a little bit down here. How's that going like that? Okay. have a lot of this one. Not too much. some of this blue up here close to the wave hopefully that wave won't be humongous I tend to you know make big waves okay. I use my finger now to blend everything together move it around a bit more of that one too and I might even put some of that up here as well so just adding a little bit more of that um, appetite blue in areas that I think needed it and also just to fill in some of the um, spots that were kind of left bare and just using my fingers now to swipe that horizon line, swivelly line, and uh, adding bits and pieces there just to, you know, fill it all in and I and use up what I what I have. And at the moment, it's looking really good. Just needs that white. I'm going in with that clear now. Um, clear is great to to place on your existing pigments on on your board because it separates those pigments and it creates dimension which is great and it also works really well with uh, with the flow of another pigment that you put on top of it or beside it and I will need it definitely here for my angel white and uh, trying to create a really nice wave Now the white, I'm not sure I've got plenty here, this is the area that's going to need a lot of it and then run it up there, back a little bit, over itself. And zig 
zigzagging a little bit just kind of long ways horizontally because I will create some really nice gaps there this is just a small thin line going across I'll start up here Oh, can't really see where I'm going. I'm just making them meet with the, the clear and that pigment. They all have to meet, you can't have any gaps, otherwise you won't get a, a nice nice uh, finish, you know. Oh, that's my door just slammed. Alright, that was good there. Now we're going to get that heat gun. I'm much more happier now with this piece. Because Um, I've allowed myself some extra working time by being better organized, you know. So that's that's given me a really pretty um, detail there underneath that. making sure that I've got everything covered and I don't. I'm just going to add extra pigment. I never sort of rush to use the heat tank. I like to have everything covered and in place and then use the heat gun because the heat really um, speeds up the setting process. So you want to have everything kind of in place before you start heating it up too much. But meet there with the white, get acquainted, say good day, mingle a little bit, and then we're going to have a party with the heat gun. You see how that's already moving, doing its thing? I made sure this is leveled properly, but it's still going to move and do its thing, you know. And going sideways, I can see that I've missed some spots here. It's not going to be a straight line, it's going to be a bit jaggy. But it's alright. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Okay, here comes the heat gun. My best friend when it comes to resin. Um, so, starting off with the low speed just to get all that uh, resin and those pigments relaxed and also to um, to bust up some of those air bubbles which is always a bonus and then um, speeding it up to the next level where it's blowing well mainly for my my wave actually because everything else is looking great but the wave I need to create some cells some lacing and also to move it in a position that I can you know see that it's working for this piece so that's what I'm doing you can see that up the top really applying force and heat 
and it just melts that angel white into the clear and into the the um, the appetite blue there and just going up above it and just uh, helping those pigments merge together and also create some amazing cells so the heat gun is um, is definitely my friend when it comes to to creating effects and moving resin I'm not tilting anything here I actually didn't even think of tilting and usually when there's a need to tilt you usually just do it so just adding a couple of lines up there in a the deeper water uh, really fast uh, kind of moves there and trying to fix up this um, part of the wave here which uh, kind of looks a little bit like a dragon head mm, looks kind of cool but uh, yeah I've, I've spent a little bit of time trying to, to fix that part there and adding a little bit more white just to to deepen that uh, the, the white there which was kind of looked a little bit more transparent than uh, what I would like it to be so I, I added a little bit more white and just adding some colors here and there just whatever I had left just to fill in some gaps and add a little bit of um, interest and dimension and some more heat gunning in a second just to move and shape that a little bit just to kind of loosen up and try and fix that uh, little dragon head which turned into uh, more of a dragon head um, but you'll see what I do next. Before I get to the dragon head, um, adding a little bit of clear over the white and also over the um, the other pigments, it really creates depth and dimension, and it's it's a good thing to do. And adding a little bit of white as well, just to create like a sky look-alike thing. So I've decided to release the tape and then use the heat gun to push that uh, white off the edge and then wipe the edge just to, to kind of uh, fix it up a little bit. Oh gosh, it's not easy trying to put the glove on a sweaty didn't think it was that bad. Oh boy, I just needed a little bit of it because my heat gun was a bit yucky. Okay. 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 Okay.
I've got a little bit of leak in here. Good thing is, things come off real easy off of resin. So you just give it a wipe. Okie dokie, here it is. I actually like this side much better, maybe because it was smaller and easier to work with and quicker. They kind of pulled that blue, kind of pulled away from the, the edge, which buggered me up a little bit. But there's the other side, so it's a little bit different because I've got that uh, olive gold. See that? I have to fix that. That was the thing that I tried to. To fix and it's really thick there now but I'll do another coat on that and uh, this is the uh, lovely olive gold I haven't used it in this on this side I actually used the um, iridescent jade here okay so that's it let me know what you think I might actually just pull some of these lines out just to tidy that bit up a little bit and um, that'll be it for this side. Got to wait another couple of days now.